because of people like the late Stephen Hawking, for example, who wrote in one of his books, he, he said that philosophy is dead. And it seems now as if scientists are holding the torch of truth. And that's, that's scientism. The irony of it is, of course, that he wrote it in a book where it's all about philosophy of science. And it's pretty clear that Hawking, brilliant as he was as a mathematical physicist, really is a classic exemplar of what Albert Einstein once said, the scientist is a poor philosopher. And my response to it is very much would be couched in the kind of attitude that Sir Peter Medawar, he's a Nobel Prize winner in Oxford here, once wrote, he said, it's so very easy to see that science, meaning the natural sciences are limited in that they cannot answer the simple questions of a child, where do I come from? Where am I going to? And what is the meaning of life? And it seems to me immensely important that we recover that. And what Metamor went on to say is we need literature, we need philosophy, and we need theology as well, in my view, in order to answer the bigger questions. Now, the late Lord Sachs, a brilliant philosopher, he was the chief rabbi of the UK and the Commonwealth and so on. And one of the guests on this series. And one of the guests on this series, well, I'm delighted to hear it. He once wrote a very pithy statement that I found very helpful. He said, you know, science takes things apart to understand how they work, and I suppose to understand what they're made of. Religion puts them together to see what they mean. And I think that encapsulates the danger in which we're standing. Science has spawned technology. We become addicted to technology, particularly the more advanced forms of it, like AI in my book, like virtual reality, the metaverse, all this kind of stuff. We've become addicted to it, but we've lost a sense of real meaning. And in particular, we've lost our moral compass. Einstein, again, to quote him, made the point long ago. He said, you can speak of the ethical foundations of science, but you cannot speak of the scientific foundations of ethics. Science doesn't tell you what you ought to do. It will tell you, of course, if you put strychnine in your granny's tea, it will give her a very hard time. In fact, it'll kill her. But it can't tell you whether you ought to do it or not to get your hands on her property. And so we're left in a scientific moral vacuum. And therefore, I feel very strongly that as a scientist of sorts, I need to challenge this. Science is marvelous, but it's limited to the questions it can handle. And let's realize it does not deal with the most important questions of life. And they are the question of who am I? What can life and does life mean? And where do we get a moral compass? Thank you.